Previously on the Heap Car Challenge. Foam flew everywhere, hanging Levi out to dry. Well, why have me do it, a fallible human, when the sun god is right there pouring down on your vehicle ready to dry it for us? And Anthony got himself in the hot seat. Did you put, oh, oh. A little bit of water in the driver's seat on a hot day, it's refreshing, right? Anthony finally got his challenge started. I killed the car. Grabbed a distributor out of pretty much the first Honda Civic I found, plugged that whole thing right in, started right up on the first click. While Levi took advantage of his head start. I actually needed to get that, that tilt column, that was the biggest thing. So I thought, heck, this one's in okay shape. If I paint it and I make it nice, no one would know. Who will roll away successful? And who won't roll away at all? This time on the Heat Car Challenge. So after I spent some time over at British Italian German Motors, big motors, those guys kind of showed me around, let me know what stuff I would need to prioritize. Number one amongst those was the intake boot. So like all that rubber, uh, you know, plumbing essentially that runs down from the motor and up to the air intake. That was gonna need to be fixed. That was gonna need to be replaced because there were tears in it and it was causing the engine to throw code. I got everything from belts for my accessories, you know, like the air conditioner, stuff like that. Needed that, also dry belt, so that got on there. Um, I also ordered a air filter and in addition to those things that go under the hood, I also needed to get some suspension components. So I got myself new thrust bushings, new ball joints, basically the kind of stuff that was gonna affect the car if you go into a corner. So it didn't feel sloppy, you know, and old. So those parts, those should be showing up pretty soon. So I had all the parts ordered and that really messed me up for the homie hookup because I'd already ordered everything. Remember, I got my car a lot earlier than everybody, so I had a little more money to spend, and I was starting to get the parts in. And I think everything I ordered, from the bumper to the air dam, to the lights, the new windshield, the tonneau cover, the tailgate, you know, the lowering kit, I found the wheels in my garage. I had those wheels. That was really, like, that worked. I couldn't believe that the bolt pattern actually fit. Uh, but I took the wheels down to my buddy at Les Schwab, uh, Wayne, and he got me a deal on some tires that would fit. Cheap tires. They raised the truck up. That was when I noticed that one side of the truck was actually had part of a lowering kit on it. The other rest of the four corners didn't. But I was able to look at the truck, really, because it was the first time I'd been up on a lift. But once I got stuff going, it felt kind of like it was a giant snowball effect where stuff started happening really fast. These are the caps that come with the wheels, but they don't fit on my truck. So we're gonna run it without lug nuts. I'll probably just end up painting them and uh, painting the centers of the hubs uh, and the brakes when I lower the truck. So that way we don't have to worry about anything. So a couple of things I ordered right off the bat that I knew I was going to install in the car uh, was going to be a front grill, meaning like a honeycomb mesh type of grill that doesn't really have a logo in it, just looks a little bit more aggressive, uh, as well as a front lip. Now the front lip I chose for this car is a little bit different than other front lips I've ran in the past on previous Honda Civics, but it's something I wanted to give a shot because it looked kind of cool and kind of unique. 
Now I also needed to order uh, the coilovers. I also needed to order tires. So I guess you could say I kind of had a visual of what I wanted this car to look like, but it was a lot of ordering new things while replacing old things at the same time. And so most of the old things I knew were gonna come from the junkyard. That next day, I brought my uh, PDR kit, my Amazon Paintless Dent Removal Kit. Uh, it's very cheap. It's, I think I paid all $40 for it, but I figured it couldn't hurt, right? So I showed up and uh, Anthony was already here doing some dent pulling, something or other. And uh, for me, my parts were arriving. I was gonna be ready to get to work on that stuff. And actually to make things even better, uh, I kind of coordinated with Dan Digna, friend of the show. He wanted to come by and check out the shop, but he also wanted to help me with the car, which I thought was really cool and I really appreciated that. I didn't demand that or ask it, they, they volunteered. So he and his buddy who were making the trip up from Texas to Alaska, they just wanted to stop by and they figured they'd give me a hand. So next thing I knew, those guys were under the car with me, uh, throwing down. So I rolled in and Anthony was already here pulling dents. That boy never wakes up early. So why he was here popping dings and dents out of his own car, I don't know. But I needed to get my new seat in. Now I had found this seat at the junkyard. It's a red velour seat, but it's cool because it's a split bench, meaning that it's a bucket with the bench. And I thought that was a much better seat uh, because you could move the driver's seat independently. Uh, I found it, it was in red, which I thought was pretty cool, so it would match the truck. But I realized the way the floor pan is in that truck is very different than the extended cab version of the same truck that I bought the seat out of. Uh, I found out that I could drill a hole through the floor. There was nothing underneath, so totally safe, easy, able to do that. So I was able to mark out where the foot was gonna go, where the holes were gonna go, and then I pulled the seat back out, took the leg off, took it down to my dad's shop, cut it and welded it, and we were done. So now I have a really nice seat in the truck too. So the truck needed a new windshield. What I did, called my buddy Dave Sherman at Novus Autoglass, let him know, hey man, I need to get my windshield replaced. Can I get on your schedule? He said, sure, not a problem, let me put you on the schedule. Somebody had some ears and they heard that I was swapping out a window, so they had to just, you know, jump in on it as well. So like Levi, I also decided to get my front windshield replaced. And so uh, mine it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but if I were to sell this car, people are gonna see that crack right there on the windshield. And with me doing all the other work on the vehicle, it didn't make sense to have a cracked windshield. So um, I jumped on board with Levi, got that replaced. So we were all getting it done at the same time. So the next thing I needed to address uh, was my hood. And no, I'm not talking about where I live. I'm talking about my actual hood on the Honda Civic. So the hood latch on there was from a different car. It wasn't even from a Honda Civic. I don't know what the heck the deal was, but it just wasn't right. So it wasn't closing all the way and it just didn't feel or look right and I didn't really have any adjustment to it. So what we ended up doing, uh, me and Jimmy, we took a little bit of rope, we took some tools, and we started to kind of get that core support shifted up a little bit. There was just a little bit of a shift in it. So we had to bring it up, got that new hood latch on there, and was able to close the hood. Now, it's not like a perfect close. So I, I mean, I, so I don't wanna say it's like a perfect, so you can't just drop the hood and it closes. It doesn't work like that, guys. I mean, this is a mint condition 2000 Honda Civic. You gotta baby this, you gotta caress it. So what you gotta do is when you're bringing the hood down, you gotta kind of slide your fingers underneath, 
feel that latch and kind of press it in a little bit so it clears it so when you close it, it clicks in perfectly. Tr trust me, that's actually how Honda designed it from the factory and it's totally normal, so don't even worry about it. So over the next few days, we had some time scheduled where we could work on the cars. Um, the headlights were being held in place by speaker wire. Not like baling twine or anything stronger, speaker wire. So I looked on lmctruck.com, found that they had all the bucket kits and everything so you could replace the buckets. They sent me new ones. I was able to put everything on the front. We got the headlights installed properly. I haven't adjusted them, but they work. And uh, then we put the grill back in, but I also had added the new bumper and the air dam. So now I had a nice air dam. I had a new front bumper that is technically off of the Z71 models and the, the diesel models, but I bought it because it's more airflow, you know, high performance kind of deal. Is our vacuum leak more than likely? You're not supposed to be able to do this. This is not uh, a diagnostic a... port. <laughs> it's not what my doctor told me. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, oh. That's the one too. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, if Levi or An Anthony have anything to do, we're here through Monday. Sweet, yeah. Lower belt has seen better days. Yes, that's the one that was toast. Dan, we should just pull the truck around and pull the tools out. So, uh, we got this much of the control arm off, and this is the thrust pushing. Actually, kind of. It's pretty loose already, huh? Yeah. So, yeah, loose this up. And then these open up. Goes like that. Goes like this. This is, so this is exactly what, what's gonna happen, right? This keeps threading and pushing the metal this way and the bushing gets pulled the opposite right, direction. Yeah. All right, guys. And just in case you thought I was slacking, I was not. I've been going to town with these wire brushes, getting the rust off of the surface of these hubs and rotors, etc. Anything that has surface rust on it, getting it off there. So uh, that's been a little bit of work in progress. I'm trying to encourage this new bushing to go onto the uh, tip of the arm here. And it's just, uh, it's giving me a little grief. It's not having it. No, it's just, it's new. It's actually how you want it. If it goes out too easy, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna work very well. <laughs> it's slip right back so out. So you need it to actually give you a little bit of fight going on. I'm just not sure if it's because of the corrosion specifically, or if it's just needing to be encouraged in a proper fashion. Like Chris was saying, there's like this, you're trying to get both, uh, you're trying to get the rubber to expand from this size to this size phrasing. And um, once you get both ends over that, it's not that bad. Let's see. Full force. Trying. <laughs> there she goes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there she goes. the uh, new uh, new ball joints in uh, so now it's time to button her all back up and 
see what it do. While we were under there, there was a number of things we got done. We did the belts, we got the uh, thrust bushings, which are more of a suspension component. So I actually got new fluid. We got a you know bleeder that I actually had there and we were able to run stuff through the system. This is something I'd done before with my Miata previously. So this wasn't a totally foreign concept. Now, in addition to doing the brake fluid flush, also dealt with the ball joints. Now, as far as the ball joints go, that's kind of an important one. You wanna make sure you have those nice and functional, new, in good shape, because if they're not, the car makes weird popping noises. You feel a lot of jerkiness when you're driving down the road. It becomes a little unpredictable. It's just not a good time. So I really wanna send a big thank you to those guys for making that whole process a little bit smoother, because, well, without them, <laughs> It would have taken a while. There was also some other things to consider, more detailing related, right? In this case, my car had some pretty yellow headlights. They were not looking great. They were looking tired. So basically, I took a cue from Anthony who was doing his headlights and I decided to do mine too. Now, if you guys know me, you'll know that I find a lot of enjoyment. I find it very satisfying restoring cloudy yellowed headlights and this Civic was no exception. So I grabbed my tools, grabbed my sandpaper, grabbed my polisher, grabbed my compound and I went to work. And so what I ended up using was the Small Flex PXE 80, the Pixie is what some of us called around here in the office. And so grabbed that with some sandpaper. Went through and ended up wet sanding. I think I started with roughly, I think a thousand grit is where I started. And then I worked my way up to 1500. From 1500, I worked my way up to 2000. Then from 2000, I worked my way up to the Trizac paper. And so from there, I grabbed my Rupes Coarse Compound and my Rupes Coarse Pad and began polishing out that headlight. Went through, did that, and then switched to the yellow polish with the yellow foam pad, knocked that out, buzzed it down, and these headlights look killer. So before I jumped into this engine bay detail, the first thing I needed to do was cover that brand new distributor that I replaced. And so those distributors can fail, especially if they get water in them. And that was literally the reason why my car wouldn't start when I got it. So it's working. So I wanted to cover that to make sure I didn't have that same problem again. Now, what I ended up doing first is actually doing a pre-spray uh, with Magic Wheel Cleaner from Coach Kemi. And so I pre-treated everything. I just let that stuff soak and I left it to just do its work for me. That's when I went in and started hitting everything with a pressure washer. Then after hitting everything with motor plast, I closed that oven and I let that baby bake. Now where I am excited is I've got these wheels on the car and I think I could I could do a decent job painting. I like to think I've had good luck with spray painting things before. Got these bad boys outside. I'm gonna start spraying them down. We'll see how it goes. It real slow. Feels like I'm spinning down the middle. Don't know which way to go. Oh no. Feels like I'm spinning down the middle. Don't know which way to go. I'm gonna take these off and with the helpful advice of Levi here. I'm gonna get some oh, aircraft stripper and we are going to rip the ever-loving out of these things. It's just 
getting like worse and worse. Kind of seems like maybe I should have gone just on a pair and then gotten another can to do another pair um, because while it is getting some, it's still not perfect. I need to get this sucker down to the bare metal. So, to be continued. Over the last two weeks of struggles, let's come together and take a look at how their budgets are coming along. Levi started dipping into his budget by buying a fresh set of tires for $440 and by replacing his windshield for $155. He then spent a whopping $766 on his lights, mirrors, bumper and air dam. Over at the junkyard, Levi scored new seats and sun visors for just $49. This spending spree of $1,409 brings Levi down to just $778 left to spend. Anthony followed in Levi's footsteps, getting his windshield replaced for $155. He also bought an Amazon PDR kit for $40 and a new hood latch for just $6. Anthony has made the least progress, leaving him with a massive $1,064 left. Dane has the least left to spend, yet he still managed to spend $314 on his suspension, belts, hoses and air filters. He also spent $19 on his brake fluid and $26 on metallic paint and aircraft stripper. I know it may be too early to tell, but it looks like he may need to buy a few more cans of that, but fortunately, he still has $358 left. Next time on The Heap Car Challenge, Dane works his mask off trying to recover his wheels while Levi gets his first opportunity under the lift. At that moment, I kind of was like, mm this is going to be a lot more work. With just five days until the car show, will their cars be ready in time? Aircraft strip.